Hi everyone, welcome to the last and final broadcast uh, from the Survive 15, P Survive PhD 15, we've even got the name of our MOOC, it's been 10 <laughs> long weeks and this is the last week of our broadcast and we're broadcasting about the final module topic which is love. I hope you've really enjoyed this week, I'm glad we left love till last because we could really feel the love in the forums and um, and I think it's really nice mood to leave the whole MOOC journey on um, is thinking about love. So tonight, along with the jammy donut chocolate block, we have with us in the Thesis Whisperer studio, we have Yay. Steph hey at Steph in Tis and Chuck. <laughs> love you too. Uh, <laughs> at Marg Prescott. There hey. she is. And Crystal. Hiding in the corner. Hiding in the corner as usual. Hi everyone. And hello Ollie. My nephew is online today. It's good to see you Ollie. Give me the feedback, the eight-year-old feedback. I love it. Okay, well, thank you and welcome to our last broadcast. So, it's been a big week. Um, it's been an interesting week on the forum. Tonight, um, Margaret's going to join us uh, with some reflections about the whole process of doing the MOOC. We're going to look at some of the funnest and most interesting posts on the forum. There were hardly any questions, so hopefully there'll be some questions on Twitter. First off, badges. You love them, we love them. Um, everyone who gets one loves it. And if you finish the MOOC, as in if you do your final assignment, you will get a badge. And so we've been talking about this badge excitement the whole way through. It's your chance to experience it by actually doing the assignment. Okay, and we'll talk about that later in the broadcast. So first off, we'd like to thank Lamexi. And uh, Lamexi sent us, um, and she gets a badge or he gets a badge, I'm not quite sure if it's a she or a he, um, for sending a couple of papers through that were, one of them was the development and validation of a measure for emotional regulation at work, uh, which I think was uh, very interesting if you have a look at that, and the emerging field of emotional regulation. So thank you for sending those through and I think that they, those papers were kind of an interesting reflection on some of the aspects of emotions that were talked about all through the MOOC. Um, more badges here for Michael Hurd's SRN for his ode to Evernote. We enjoyed that very much. Thank you, thank you Michael. And a second badge, but well deserved, to Hannah or at Wide White Stage for her ode to felt pens. Um, hopefully someone's got the link there. We can retweet the image. If not, Hannah, I know you're online, so if you could share that image with us again. We also love your penguin wrap, which was just shared earlier, so thank you for that. Uh, thanks to Margaret, uh, a mod, uh, moderator Margaret, who gave us this week's Storify, and we'll tweet that link out now on Survive PhD 15 hashtag. And um, we thought before we get into reading some of the good forum posts this week that I'd pull Margaret up on camera. Um, today I ran a workshop, write that journal article in seven days. As part of that workshop, um, I asked the uh, participants to do some free writing and this is what apparently what Margaret wrote during that particular session and um, you all have to give Margaret lots of love because Margaret's actually terrified, absolutely terrified of getting on camera. You'll notice Steph's been on camera, Katie's been on camera, Anna's been on camera, never Margaret and Margaret owned up to me a couple of weeks ago that she's actually terrified of presenting and so um, there's lots of love hearts they're streaming in. <laughs> So go for it, Margaret. Hey everyone. I'm going to just do this off the cuff. This morning, in a five minute um, free writing session, I decided to focus on the reflections that I'm supposed to have been doing for the MOOC. And it surprised me. I wasn't focused on this session on love or anything like that. But what I did notice was that what I came out with was that this is coming up to the end and it's going to be the end of our weekly sessions, the looking at everything and also that there was such an outpouring this last week on people saying oh no it's the last, can we continue the Periscope, can we continue the hashtag, questions I have actually already posed to Inga and is the information still going to be available and all of those things and one of the things I realised was that we have left a lot of you with a community so that you've now gotten things like the PhD owls and different groups and the parents group and things on uh, Facebook and a few other groups and there's a group in London and one in Dublin and all around the place. But one of the things for me was that there was suddenly this thought of or feeling like we were actually going to be abandoning a lot of you where 
gone through this last 10 weeks and suddenly we're not going to be here every week again. And at the same time, it was almost like we were stepping away from it and we're going to lose that connection and that connectedness with all of you other PhDs and supervisors out there around the world. So for me, that was sort of a realization that it wasn't just that we're disconnecting from you, it's we're disconnect oh, you're disconnecting from us as well. And that was quite an interesting thing for me to be reflecting on. And that was sort of about it. And I just felt that I wanted to share that this week, our last live Periscope, unless we actually get one going at our final drinks gig to say goodbye. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so I will hand back to Inga now and she can continue on with the rest of it. Thank you. Thanks, Margaret. Cheers and hair That's That's good. Good. That's good. Yeah, so well done. well done. She's now sweating. Just sit down and, and relax. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. And what's been really fantastic for me through this whole MOOC journey has been my moderators, I just want to thank all of them, especially now. So Margaret, who you just met for the first time, Stephanie, of course, Anna, uh, Kat, I'm going to leave someone out, Jonathan, Katie, who's unfortunately, well, fortunately for her in Byron Bay, unfortunately for us, and of course, Crystal, who's been reliable, tech support, humour, and a truth bomb teller um, <laughs> for this whole project. So um, thanks, team. Did I forget anyone? I didn't, did I? I didn't forget any one of our moderators there. No. Um, so thanks so much to everyone for, for helping out. I just couldn't have done that this alone. Absolutely not. Now, speaking about not doing things alone, this week we asked you to show the love and uh, we challenged you actually to show the love to inanimate objects because it's easy to express love for humans, isn't it? But if we think about the things that support our research, the computers, the desks, the spaces, the tablets, we're forced to think about love in a whole different way. And some environmentalists have actually said that the reason that we don't, um, that thinking about love for the inanimate can actually help us think about our environments more generally and, and respect them more. So we thought this was a nice sentiment to end on. Some people, of course, were perplexed by the task. Some people were actually really resistant, um, but many, in fact, the overwhelming majority of you really got into the spirit of it. So thank you for that. I smiled the whole time through all the forums and I can't say that I've done that at any other time during the moot because we've tackled some really deep, difficult emotional issues. People have shared a lot of, of, of things that have been really um, difficult to share and difficult to deal with. So it's actually been quite a gruelling journey for many of us and opening our hearts to that has, uh, has, um, has sometimes been really hard for us as moderators and we've talked sometimes about the more heart-rending posts that we're reading and, and short each other up during that process. So I can say that this week I just smiled pretty much the whole time through it. So thank you for that. Now, um, some people were perplexed by the task, um, but not um, Golzm, G-U-L-Z-M, who got a badge a couple of weeks ago, I believe. She really got into the spirit of it when she wrote, thanks to my cups of tea, they're always in amazing colorful mugs. Without getting up constantly to make tea, I would be sitting on Twitter all day instead of getting back to work. Thanks also for waking me up. Thanks to my gorgeous diaries that thrill me all year round. As an extremely unorganised person, I really appreciate a pretty and good sized hardback diary that I can scribble all over. It makes me feel like a grown up, even if it's cut in glitter, covered in glitter and comes with stickers, YOLO. I agree, YOLO. Thanks to also to notebooks. I was scared to write in you at first, but now I love filling you up with spider diagrams, lists and practice writing. Thanks also to Sotero, who I've just found in the final year of my PhD, thanks to two lovely people from this MOOC. I've moved over a lot of my PDFs and saved loads of new articles and written notes and quotes that are far easier to find than what I wrote in random Word documents. I was a bit apprehensive about praising objects or speaking to objects, but I think I should be really grateful for doing a PhD at a time when Google Scholar and laptops exist. Fair play to all those scholars before me labouring away in libraries when I could do my work in my pyjamas. And I think we can all relate to those sentiments. Uh, there's been some posts back on the Whisperer uh, about people reflecting on doing research in the olden days before these massive open databases existed. And I mean, I think it probably was a little bit easier back then in some ways because there was less to read. There wasn't the same expectation that you would get through so much material. At the same time, researching in your pyjamas, you've got to love that. Okay. 
Another anonymous uh, student wrote, sometimes I get quite attached with objects, refusing to throw them away, even when they get older. For my PhD, I work a lot with computers and I pick up names for them according to my favorite anime, slightly childish, I know. I don't think it's childish at all, anime is cool. So mm -hmm. being a huge fan of Sailor Moon for 20 years now, my lab computers, the computer is always male in my mind for some reason, are named Pegasus 1 and Pegasus 2, when I had to replace him with a newer, newer one. Similarly, I named my laptops Endymion 1 and 2 and the hard disk is named Helios and Tuxedo Mask. I'm currently writing this post from Endymion 2. I don't consider this habit totally normal. However, it's a relief to hear that someone actually texted her old cell phone to say thanks. I feel I'm not alone. And uh, no, you're not. One of my favourite things is to name computers. In fact, my husband's the master of this and he, um, he once had a whole server room full of computers and they were all named after Australian animals. So we had possum and goanna and redback and also a deadly snake called the taipan and then after he ran out of snake names he started calling them trouser trouser <laughs> snake that's my husband love him now for years and years my laptops and um ipads have been named after a fictional starship so i've had beliskna and i've had white star and all sorts of fun mm. star trek um star trek uh, objects as well it's fun and not at all the least bit weird uh, nor is naming your Wi-Fi networks, and um, we we're going to post a link of a, a post I found this week on the funniest Wi-Fi names ever. There's some pretty hilarious on there. Now, some people sent in love letters or love poems to their lab equipment, which was fantastic, and I particularly like this one from Japasco. Dear Camera, in the past, when people did fatigue crack growth experiments, they would have to sit next to the testing machine all day. Every so often they would stop the test and they'd have to take out a ruler and a magnifying glass or a jeweler's eyepiece and measure how long the crack was. Then they'd have to sit and wait for the next measuring time. If they wanted to go away, eat, sleep or use the bathroom, the test would have to wait. However, thanks to you, that's no longer true. You take a picture whenever the test machine pokes you electronically. So now I'm, it's freed me up to do other things with my time while the test is running. Later, I can examine the pictures you took at my leisure. Thanks to you, I can even continue doing science when I've snuggled up in my nice warm bed. So thank you once again, little camera, for your tireless service. And objects are tireless, aren't they? We don't notice them, of course, until they break, which is what we talked about in the material. And so I think in this lab equipment, paying attention to it and giving it some, um, some respect um, and some thought about what it actually enables us to do and do differently, I think is a nice thing to do. You can see a picture we're going to tweet a link to the edX course, so unless you're enrolled, you won't be able to see that. You can see John Allen's camera there. Um, and thanks to um, Hannah, who we mentioned getting a badge for her um, felt coloured pens, we'll tweet a link to that discussion post as well. Now, of course, inanimate things and thinking about our love for them um, also provokes our thought and love for animate beings as well. And we love this one from Tash um, Donnelly. Most of my desk is covered in books, notepads, and my laptop too, actually. But squished into every available crack and book are tokens of love made for me by my children. This is what gets me through my day. I know that even though they tell me they miss me all the time and wish I wasn't always working, they still love me. And I think they are proud of what I'm doing. Well, that's what they say. And that's what I aim for, to be a great role model for my kids and to, for them to know that you can do anything you set your mind to. I can peer over my laptop screen and see a plastic horse my son made, the rose they gave me for Mother's Day, the origami lilies and colourful pictures made by their precious hands and feel the love radiating from these things. This gets me through the day, although it often adds to my never-ending stream of guilt. Thank you to my beautiful children for understanding why I'm always at my desk or away from home, for making me something every time I go away for work or study and for still loving me. And that was beautiful, Tash, and those other PhD parents out there or people who, whose partners are pining away. Maybe some of the partners have stayed with us through the whole MOOC. Um, and thank you, we do, you know, that sort of speaks to all the love I think that we have for those people. Of course, some people didn't connect so well with inanimate things. And I actually, I have to admit, I found this letter from another anonymous student a little bit sad, actually. And they said, this le week's lesson lost me completely. My supervisors have hidden agenda that do not support that stewardship ideal painted in the course notes. I'm being used to raise money with next to nothing released to me for my research. I don't know how to respond to the exercise of talking to inanimate objects. 
The topic of love does not resonate with me and I fail to see the relationship with the exercise. The Epicurious video spoke of happiness, contentment that relates to a life centred on reflective practices, connection to friends, community and simplicity. Practising gratitude for things and people around me is how I find the balance in my study. Stillness and calm definitely helped me declutter my mind. During my reflection, I discovered the important people in my life are top priority over the most important tasks in my studies. I hope no one is as surprised as I am. The most important person is me. And so I'm glad, actually, even though you couldn't connect with the exercise, um, Anonymous, that you wrote a beautiful post and I think um, actually dug deep in the way that we really did want you to do this last week and be reflective about the things that really matter. Now, over the, the, the 10 weeks that we've been doing the MOOC, we've, we've read some really heart-rending posts, as I said at the start. And some people are talking about wanting to quit and, and terrible... Um, terrible feelings about their PhD. Uh, not the vast majority, of course, but there were a significant number of people who felt seemed to feel that way. And that does remind us that we do this, um, I mean, sometimes it can not feel like a choice, but ultimately it is a choice to do your PhD. And walking away is also okay. And we need to make that okay for each other if that is really the right choice for you. And that, to remember that there are just actually more important things in life than the PhD. Um, and that's a good reminder. So thank you for that. So I think um, reflecting on the inanimate can broaden our conception of love and lead us back to appreciating those people in our life, I think, even more. And the exercise, of course, was not meant to suggest that somehow people were secondary or different or not crucial to our research journeys. And I think Dupres V made this connection beautifully when she said, Epicurious may have been onto something with the friendship idea. I have the absolute pleasure of sharing an office with one of my best friends for more than seven years. In fact, not only is she one of my best friends, she is also one of my, my main research partner and colleague. When I read the assignment for this week, I went through all the bits of technology and equipment I use daily, and I realised if they were not there tomorrow, I would be able to find a different way of achieving, achieving my goals. Yes, it would be cumbersome and take much, much longer, but the pen can replace the keyboard. Letters and phone calls can replace emails. And I could go back to requesting articles from a librarian instead of searching a digital database. I, I, yes, we could, but we're glad we don't have to. I'll just have to add that. And one thing that is truly irreplaceable in work, my work and my research is my friend. So I thought it was time to say for me to say thank you. Thank you for knowing exactly when to say, let's have some tea. Thank you for editing my writing. Someday I'll learn how to use commas correctly. Thank you for letting me ramble on about a great paper, methodology or new idea, even though you know I may have forgotten it next week. Thank you for agreeing to join crazy research projects, normally with little to no funding, normally with communities far, far away. Thank you for always agreeing to writing with me, even if the deadline is only days away. My greatest wish for any researcher or academic is to find the human tool that helps them be the best they can be. And I love that. And I think... Um, that speaks to why we do academic work, isn't it? It's a really profoundly human pursuit. And um, it's what drew me back actually to this profession from architecture where I felt like I was just communing with computers all day. I felt I was working with people, I was contributing to people, I was making people's lives better or maybe worse, but often I tried to make it better. And, and I think that's what, what really matters. Now, there were no questions really this week. Um, Perhaps this is a reflection of MOOC exhaustion. I don't know. I'm feeling pretty tired, but still quite energised. I must say, um, I've been saying to everyone, I will never, ever run a MOOC again. But I always say that at the end of a long project. So who knows next year? Um, but probably not next year. Maybe the year after we'll run this MOOC again. Um, so it's an exhaustion. But the one question that I could actually answer on the forums um, was, is it hard to love new things? And this was from Tracy Griffiths, who asked, Given all the graded advice so far on streamlining the research process using apps like Evernote, I'm wondering if the Survive 15 PH team has any advice on ebooks. I love using them, especially when I can access them instantly via my university library, but they seem a very immature technology. The online ones come in so many different formats with each supplier having their own website. The downloadable EPUB versions often don't include the original page number, while the ePDFs are awkward to read on a smaller, say, a 7-inch tablet. Also, with all the ebook readers I've tried on my Android tablet, I'm yet to find one where I can export my notes and highlights. Does anyone find ebooks this clumsy and frustrating for academic work, or am I totally missing something here? Um, you're not alone in your frustration. No, I think we can all say we find ebooks 
um, varying degrees. I'm, I'm deeply conflicted. They're both convenient and frustrating at the same time. Um, especially those clunky library ones um, that just seem more about somehow, well, they're all about protecting the content at the expense of actually making it accessible um, and, um, and easy access. Now, I hope this will change. I mean, the technology's even evolved in the last, how long have we been using these things? Only really about five years have they been really common. Um, but at the moment, I think part of the problem is that the ecosystem is so diverse. So I often buy paper versions of ebooks and vice versa. I like ebooks because they're always there, they're easy to carry, they're easy to search. I like paper books because you can flip between the pages, compare things, and you can lend them to people. Um, and also indexing on ebooks, it's got a long way to go. It's really not quite, um, quite as good as just flipping to the end and having a look at the index. So, um, so I'm with you on that. I don't have a good solution other than to say, if you find yourself buying um, paper books and ebook versions of the same thing, it's probably normal. A lot of people tell me they do it. Okay, now there have been some difficulties with the peer with the assignment. So I've been saying to everyone all week, you know how when you run a class and in the last week of semester, everyone's saying, what did you want for that assignment again? And when exactly? And is it in a plastic folder? And did you want it in your pigeonhole? And you maybe have, I don't know, 30, 40 students asking you this question. Try 13,000 people asking you that question. It gets fairly intense. There's been quite a few emails flying backwards and forwards, and I've been actually functionally useless, I'll admit it, at actually answering these questions, Crystal. Um, I might be having to ask you to answer some of the... Now, Now, one of the things that MK noticed that some people have difficulty um, accessing Dropbox links, um, and some people suggested that sometimes what you're seeing is an unclickable image, not actually a hyperlink and that manually typing the address into the address bar works. That gets a thumbs up from Crystal, she's nodding. So you should be able to see the URL, I know it's a pain, um, write it out on a piece of paper, type it in, you should be able to access the, the um, Dropbox link. Um, there was another problem with one of the assignments that, uh, thank you, who pointed that out to us, do you remember Crystal? So this with the, with the grading numbering, criteria? grading criteria on one of them. Yeah, anyway, we worked around around it. So thank you for someone to pointing that out that we'd overlooked in our, um, in our uh, editing process. Sorry about that. But anyway, we fixed it. And the previous, um, the previous people who've marked it should be unaffected because Crystal very cleverly found a workaround for that. So uh, was there anything else technical from the exam submissions that I probably should talk to? No, if anyone has more technical issues, tweet me. Tweet Crystal. Crystal bubbles, crystal underscore bubbles. Um, we've got a. The assignment is due the twelfth. The assignment is due on the twelfth of November, and today is the what is today? The third for us. Third. We're having trouble with the computer. Yeah, it won't turn off. Okay. <laughs> well, that was interesting. Um, uh, so, and then your peer reviews are due by. The, uh, so they open as soon as you've submitted your assignment yep. and then they close the 19th. Okay, so that as soon as you submit the assignment, the peer review becomes open to you and you have until the 19th to to um, to complete your peer review. So uh, do we have any numbers, Crystal, on how many people have handed in submitted? Last time I checked it was 36, but that was last week. Oh, 36 of you. Wow, that's great retention rate. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, ultimately, ultimately, yeah, ultimately, we hope many more of you are in the process of preparing your final assignment. Ultimately, you know, you don't have to do it. We're not that kind of course. It's all about the experience. But hey, for our numbers, it would be really nice if you did actually finish it. But that's, uh, that's really up to you. Um, people have asked, should we keep the survive PhD hashtag going? Um, and absolutely. I mean, it's there. It's out there. No one owns it. It's a thing. Um, you've met people there, you want to keep chatting on that, that's great. I'll keep checking on it and see, um, see if there's still conversation. And, um, and hopefully the community will it maybe sustain there or break into other spaces, um, Facebook and other places, or even, I don't know, face-to-face. -face. Um, will you have access to material you, when we're finished? Yes. When you're enrolled in the course, you will be able to come back in and access the material. Now, edX has some copyright restrictions over, is it Creative Commons yeah. over the material? Mm -hmm. Is it a Creative Commons share-alike attribution license? I think so. I think it is. 
Anyway, check the license conditions, but it should allow you to take material out and use it. So if you've proposed to do a workshop or something like that and you want to actually use the material, you should be able to do that. We are planning, well, Katie and I were talking before she went on holiday. We were planning to make an EPUB. She showed me some examples of that and that looked like a really much more accessible way of creating the content um, in a single document that you can read on an iPad or something that would have links to all the videos and all the materials. So we'll work on that. Um, and that will also enable you to access the material offline, which is great. Now, don't forget that ANU has plenty of other MOOCs. If you so wish, you can take the Actuarial Studies MOOC that's running at the moment. I promised Adam that I'd give him a bit of a spruik on our Periscope broadcast. I wasn't quite sure how many of you would be interested in Actuarial Studies, but I hear it's a burgeoning industry. Anyway, Adam's doing really well in that MOOC, so good on you. Okay, um, are there any questions from Twitter? Um, first, we'll take a question from Periscope. Taking a question um, from Periscope. We had a comment that it's great that you're using Periscope, but have you experienced any resistance from ANU um, through using this technology? No, no resistance. I don't know. No one's told me I can't. Other people at ANU are using the technology. So it was used up at Mount Stromlo to set a record number of stargazers. Um, it's been used by our media department. And in fact, um, I had three emails this week from different people doing MOOCs and projects asking how to use, how we use the Periscope and how we screen record. And I now have a whole summary of what we did. So if you're interested in how we did it and how we worked it out, um, we're happy to send you that. So we're happy to share what we learned about doing Periscope. People have asked me a lot, um, am I planning to do more? We will probably try and do a pop-up Periscope broadcast from our fun rap party in Canberra face to face at Fellows Bar, I'm buying the beer, snacks, soda and cider. Yay. Yay. I have a little bit of budget left. So come along and that is on, make me sure I get the right date. It's the 17th, right? Of November. Whatever date. <laughs> <laughs> Can someone quickly right. look up the event okay. right page um, while I just stand here yeah, and look like a fool? Because I have this sort of number dyslexia thing where I give people the wrong dates. This is why I have the wonderful Melanie who does all my events organising and never gives the wrong date to anybody. So um, we are having a wrap party and we would love you to come. Now, you don't have to have finished the MOOC, okay? You could have done three weeks and gone, I just got a bit busy. Just come along, have a drink, tell us, uh, tell us about your experience. Is there, are you guys checking? Okay. Um, so the other thing... Tweet it and... We'll tweet it. And stick it on the page. Oh, yeah. We will tweet it and stick yeah. it on the page. Okay. Yeah. I had it right in front of me. Oh, you had it right in front of you? Yeah. It is awesome. the 17th. Cool. Uh, well, I have the link. I've just tweeted yeah. the link. She's awesome. Crystal's tweeted the link and she's going to look at the link now so that I can... This is a very muddled... Look, it's love. It's making us all a little bit strange and befuddled, right? Someone from Twitter suggests no cider if you haven't completed. No cider if you haven't completed. Oh, can that's not very one? loving, is it? <laughs> Okay, location, location for the Canberra meetup. Everyone in the Canberra region and anyone who can get here, it is at the Fellows Bar, which is on Liversidge Street at University House. It's downstairs, it's right up the back, we'll have a sign. So hopefully you'll be able to find it there. Um, we'd love to see you. If you are planning on running an event, a wrap party or a little community meetup, um, then um, let us know and we'll publicise it in the next mail out. When do we get a badge for completion? We will be sending them out um, the week after uh, the Danny submission said closes. Earlier than a week after. No earlier than a week after, because Crystal has to do some coding to unpack all the completions. It's actually not very straightforward, um, so it won't. Uh, um... Tash, uh... Yes, Tash, come visit us. Email us um, uh, if you're if you're dropping by town. If you've been in the MOOC, we've had a few people drop by into our broadcast and just come by for a cup of coffee because they've happened to be in Canberra, so we'd love to see you. Um, what else can I say? Um, anything else from Twitter before I wrap? Um, yes. Future projects that widen, widen your horizons whilst building on your PhD base. Say you love your project or topic. How do you go about shaping that into future projects? That's from Wide White Sage. Oh, so how, how to take what you love about your project and shape into future projects. Oh, wow. Um, hmm. How do I think on my feet? Any ideas, team? Just do it. 
Go, just do it. Also, actually, look on the Research Whisperer. Can someone find Research Whisperer and tweet it? Um, my friend Chin and Jonathan, they're all about the getting of the funding. If you haven't discovered Research Whisperer, it's not me, it's my friends. I just said, hey, use the name. And they did. They've been going for years. Um, Research Whisperer, so many posts about extending research, getting grants. In fact, their tagline is just like the thesis whisperer, but with more money, which is always a good thing. Um, any other questions from Twitter, feedback? Before uh, Joe Hestia is going to be doing a kind of chat using the hashtag on once a month, oh. starting on the 3rd of December from 8.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. I hope you all heard that. So Joe mm. Prestia, at Joe Prestia, we'll tweet that out. We'll be doing a regular chat from the 3rd of December on Survive 15, P PhD yes. 15, uh, between what times? Yes. 9 till 9.30 p.m. Australian time? Australian, Australian time. time. Wonderful. I'll tune in. That'd be fantastic. Um, and we will try to do Periscope broadcast. I'm going to try and implement Periscope into my teaching next year, so... Look out for that. I'll be publicising it on my usual Thesis Whisperer channel. Um, so much love pouring in here through Periscope. Um, we're missed already, apparently, team. Oh, I feel sad now. I might even get a bit teary and people saying best MOOC ever. Thank you so much. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure bringing this MOOC to you. I have to tell you, it's nearly killed me. <laughs> um, but what doesn't kill you makes you stronger and makes you more loving. So a massive, massive thank you to everyone who's followed the MOOC over the time. A massive thank you to the team, to Marnie Warns Harrington, the DVC here at ANU for believing in the project, to Richard Robinson who provided all sorts of material and emotional support, and to the team of course. Um, it's really been wonderful to have you online and listening and participating. We've really enjoyed working. This has been our favourite part of the MOOC, actually has been these broadcasts in the evenings, getting together, eating our chocolate. Thank you so much for joining us. As usual, all the resources will be up at, on Twitter on the Storify and Canberra based people really do hope to see you at our MOOC wrap up party. Thank you so much. Um, it is like the Oscars. I'd like to thank the Academy <laughs> and yes, I would like to thank the Academy. So thank you so much and um, we'll see you again. Bye bye. <laughs>